game, bro. Why the game of the year or whatever isn't as good as other stuff that I like better. So, okay, Spurb is this game that a lot of cats seem hella pumped of, and this beta is sitting on my desk for review, so I'm like, yeah, man, I'll write something. But I don't know. I'm like, so this is about houses or some noise? That's fine. I'm sure that's like fucking dynamite in a handbag for some brosives. But all I'm saying is, when do you get to thrash anything? While you're playing house or some shit, are you ever in jeopardy of getting mud on your doll's dress or whatever from busting out? And I quote, the mad stunts all wicked up ins? Know what I'm saying, bro yo ma? I didn't actually play this game, but I gave it 1.5 hats out of 5 hats to keep it real. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to my boy Dennis who was over the other day. We were gonna chill in front of the Dark Knight, and he was so psyched of it, y'all. So, this one time, he was leaning against the screen door, and the shit popped open. And the back deck was wet, and he slipped down the steps and broke his thumb on the lawn. It wasn't a long fall, but hey, I guess a thumb bone wasn't made for supporting the brunt of a huge useless tool against wet grass. We never did watch the Dark Knight on account of Ron tucking his bawling candy-ass girth to the hospital, but it's cool. I still got another watch in me, bro tell Rwanda. Bro notes. Dennis was so wasted. Haha. <laughs> I mean, damn. It might come in handy if you ever need something that burns easily. After looking at the magician's hat, you expend your final card on it. You would like to get the funny glasses too, but you don't have a free card in your Silidex. However, you are able to merge the beagle puss and the magician's hat to create a clever disguise. John, who is this John you speak of? You are quite certain there has never been, nor ever will be. No, no, yeah, this is just a really, really shitty disguise. While you are wearing the items, they remain on the card, but it is temporarily removed from the deck, thus freeing up the cards beneath it. After leaving your room, you exit into the hallway. On one wall, a picture of hangs of a fella who sure looks like he knows how to have a laugh, a man after your own heart. You always thought that he looked a lot like Michael Cera, but your dad swears on the many hallowed tombs of Egypt that it is not. You're not sure about that, though. On the other wall was one of your dad's stupid clowns, or harlequins, as he is quick to correct anyone who would venture to such a brazen assumption. After heading downstairs, the accursed odour of fresh baking wafts into your newfound nostrils. Something is brewing in the kitchen. It must be the connivings of your arch-nemesis Betty Crocker, and the rich, buttery aroma of her plot stinks into high heaven. This mission is going to be more difficult than you imagined. You check out the shelves of fanciful harlequins. Ugh, look at this fucking garbage. You hate this stuff. Funny is funny, but your dad can sure be a real cornball. Sometimes at night, you just pray for burglars. A bright orange flame flickers in the fireplace. It doesn't matter that it's April or that it's not terribly chilly outside. In a home, a fireplace needs a fire, and that's what a fireplace is for. A fire belongs in a fireplace, damn it! Capturegorically, at all times without exception. As domestic myth of uncountable origin holds, a home borrows the spirit of the flame for as long as it makes a guest of it, much as the moon takes liberty with the sun's rays. The moon is an arrant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun, Mark Twain. You're almost certain Mark Twain said that. Tossing the game bro into the fire, it doesn't actually burn anywhere near as quickly as you had hoped. As you decide to fondly regard the cremation, you examine the sacred urn containing your departed Nana's ashes. When your father gives her portrait a wistful glance now and then, you can tell it brings back painful memories. A tall bookshelf, a ladder, an unabridged Colonel Sassacus. He never wants to talk about it. After reaching for the urn, you clumsily mishandle it, and now ash is everywhere. In retrospect, upon mulling cinematic tropes regarding ash-filled urns, this outcome was a virtual certainty. You'd probably better clean it up before Dad finds it, though. Whilst cleaning up, you come upon your father's pipe, in which you use it to beef up your clever disguise. Looking upon the large package in the room, you contemplate what could possibly be inside it, and the thought of that is very exciting. But it also makes you a little nervous at the same time. Oh, hell no! With that out of the way, you first prop the Harlequin doll up on the couch. Having it in the middle of the room sprawled out all akimbo-like just struck you as unseemly. 
you capture lock the ashes onto your available card. Carefully, you merge the sacred urn with the ashes. Most of the ashes back in the urn, but it's a total mess. Really, it would have been tidier if you just used a broom and a dustpan. Putting the urn back, no one will be the wiser. Except for maybe people with eyes. After getting just another brilliant idea for something to do with those pointless arms, you pry them out of the cake and quickly capture log them. And also it looks like Pester Chum is acting up again. Well it appears that another one of your chums is messaging you. I understand you have recently come into the possession of the beta release of the Game of the Year, as featured in respectable periodicals such as Game Bro Magazine. That's an ugly rumor. Whoever told you that is a filthy liar. And you should probably stop hitting on him all the time or whatever. I can't control myself. I must have a weakness for insufferable pricks. Anyway, I still haven't checked the mail. My dad has it. I'm trying to get it from him, so BRB. John. What? You're wearing one of your disguises now, aren't you? You are typing to me right now while wearing something ridiculous. No, why would you even think that? That is so stupid. Okay. Alright, wish me luck. Oh, by the way, I was wearing a silly disguise this entire time. <laughs> I know, John. After heading back downstairs, you can now execute that brilliant idea that you had. There should be just enough frosting on the fake arms to serve as an adequate adhesive. <laughs> oh, you don't care what Colonel Sasaka says, this makes it at least a million percent funnier. After finding a burnt page on the floor from the Game Bro magazine, you decide to inspect it. Brobalone! You decide to put this back in the fire where it belongs. And while you're cleaning up, you may as well throw the present wrap in the fire. You think of capture logging the doll, but you can carry hefty items, but this thing is just way too big. Get real. Besides, you don't even want it. Looking upon Colonel Sasaka's text, you thought about consulting it to determine just how hilarious the doll is now. But this text is way too big to navigate in a timely fashion. You decide to forget about it for now. Moving onwards, the door to the left leads into the kitchen from which a smell of baking wafts, a powerful aroma which could lift even an especially portly hobo off of his feet. The door to the right leads to his study where your dad spends a lot of his time. He could be in either room, so where will you go? After choosing to go into the study, John looks around. It doesn't look like your dad is in here right now. Looking upon your father's desk is a deck of playing cards, one of your dad's pipes, the April issue of the Serious Jester magazine, and a stray capture log card. There is also a can of peanuts on the desk. <laughs> oh dad, you won't be falling for that one again. A severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. You swap the magician's hat with a bowler hat. This disguise is somewhat less funny, but a whole lot more distinguished looking. Your dad maintains numerous pipes around the household. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he can rather be a piss poor excuse for a roughneck if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe though. The first one tastes bad enough as it is. But how you suffer for your comedy. Hey, there's a capture log card on the desk. Yes, this will be perfect for expanding the space in your cellar. Ah! Out of frustration for the antics of the capture log card, John plays a haunting piano refrain. Now John decides to play 52 card pickups, the prankster's favourite card game, even though you are alone in the room, thus rendering it an especially foolish version of Solitaire. 
So stupid! Look at this mess! The peanut gallery all over there is sure getting a kick out of it. You are allergic to their scorn. You go back into the living room and contemplate about checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into Dad's encounter. Your television is also currently airing a commercial. You exit the house. Hooray. After checking your mailbox, it is predictably empty. You have already been scooped by your father. The streets are empty. Wind skim the voids, keeping neighbours apart, as if grazing the hollow of a cut reed or say. A plundered mailbox, a familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation place to keep the, its instrument in tune. It is your 13th birthday today, and as with all 12 preceding it, something feels... missing from your life. The game presently eluding you is only the latest sleight of hand from the repertoire of an unseen Riddler. One to engender a sense not of mirth, but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself. It's a mystery dispersing altogether, like the moon's faint reflection. With even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well, it is the most diabolical riddle of all. Absent diminishes little passions and increases great ones, as winged extinguishes candles and fans of fire. Walt Whitman. Yes, you are certain Walt Whitman said that. 100% positive. You have a feeling that it's going to be a long day. But despite this, maybe you should leave a surprise for the mailman. No. 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 Looking into your dad's car, the door is locked and your dad has the car keys. You peer in through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There is also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. Could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that usually comes in the mail, like bills or coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take this stuff inside. You try to get a gander in through the kitchen window, but you can't see a whole lot. It seems that your dad has been doing so much baking, the glass has steamed up. God, he is so weird. But you can see what's on the table just beside the window. It looks like the mail is there, and included among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and an envelope that appears suspiciously labelled with the Suburb logo. Could it be? Unfortunately, the window is locked. Heading back inside, you decide to go into the kitchen. You have no other choice. You are going in. Clever disguise, it's time to work your magic. Your dad sees right through your costume. You don't even know what you are thinking with this foolish ruse. You unequip the clever disguise. Your dad wields a dreaded artifact of confection. He stands between you and the mail. There is only one way to settle this. Strife! 